Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple with another YouTube mini class for you this week. Now I missed you all last week, I'm sorry. I was supposed to have done a YouTube on Friday, but that was the day my son James graduated from sixth grade. So that took precedence and that's where we were celebrating his sixth grade graduation. And James Robert Park, I am extremely proud of you. So. When you look back at this YouTube, who knows how many years later, and you may be married with children, you know that your mom and dad were just over the moon about you graduating. Congratulations, dude. Well done. Okay, so that's where the YouTube was. <laughs> I was sitting in 100 degree weather out in the heat, but <laughs> beaming like you couldn't believe. And I told, I, I mentioned on Facebook, I don't know if you follow us or not, but I mentioned on Facebook that you know, he's 12 years old and, and getting him out of bed in the morning is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. <laughs> but the morning of graduation, it was six o'clock in the morning and he comes bouncing in our room and he wakes my husband and I up and he has got his white dress shirt on and he's got his black slacks and his shoes and his hair is all done and his teeth are brushed and he's like, mom, I'm ready, it's graduation day. Well, graduation wasn't for several more hours, but I thought right then and there my heart was gonna burst. <laughs> okay, so moving on and congratulations, James, and thanks everybody for understanding that um, family does come first. Okay, for this week, I've got a lot to talk about, so I'm gonna try and get through it pretty quickly. First off, what's new? We have the new My Favorite Things dies and stamps in stock. They're going to be online. By the time you're seeing this YouTube, they will already be up and online. They're gonna be on a product premiere, so they're gonna be 20% off. And I would, I mean, some of the new styles are so stinking cute. And we were able to um, show samples of all of them. So when you go to the online store, you can not only see the dies and the stamps, but you can see some samples that they did at My Favorite Things and their designers really are just the best. Next, I have this little list because there's getting to be so much to talk about. Next, new diversions. Those are also in stock and those will also be 20% off and it's a whole summer beachy feel theme. They've got new um, edge dies. They've got some really cute shell dies. So um, take a look at those. Those are diversions. Those will be 20% off. And then the shop that didn't hop event. That's coming up July 26th through August 11th. It will be in store and online, which means our entire store with the exclusion of Copic markers and a few things will be on sale for 20% off. Our entire online store with the exclusion of a few things like the Copic markers, which are already at 525, those will, the, the entire store will be on sale for 20% off. And we'll be having our warehouse sale featuring Sizzix at the same time, and that will be online. And we've got dies for as little as a dollar. Yes, a dollar. And wait till you see the tote bag that I have for you. Now there's only 232 tote bags. That's all they had left. We bought every last one of them, but the price is gonna be amazing. You are definitely going to want to pick up that tote bag because it will fit your Cricut, it will fit your Silhouette, it will fit your Sizzix Big Shot, it will fit everything. So, um, July 26th through August 11th. Now, I'm gonna make this disclaimer on probably every YouTube up until then. We will not start processing orders until July, or August 17th. We won't even start processing orders until August 17th. So if you get into the warehouse sale on the very first day, July 26th, we will not even look at your order until August 17th. Let me tell you why. We have a whole store full of people and I'm dressed as the evil queen and the girls are the seven dwarfs and we have between 600 and 1,000 people come through our store and there's no physical way for us to be helping customers and do online at the same time. But we want you to take part. We want you to get the deals and the savings. Just know that there's going to be a delay in shipping. It will start, we will start processing orders on August 17th. And that way you're aware and, and you know that you're gonna get all your goodies, you're gonna get all your deals, you're gonna get all your savings, you're gonna get all the free gifts we have for um, the shop that didn't hop in the warehouse sale. You're going to get all of that, but it won't start processing until about a week after the event. Cause last time it took us a week just to print the National Sca Scrapbook Day orders. Just printing took us a week, so that gives me a week to print all the orders. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. 
Uh, Sizzix came out, Ellison came out to my store last week and we had a wonderful meeting and they brought me some fabulous pricing for, I think the best pricing we've ever had for this event. And this is our first time offering it on sale, so I'm just really jazzed and geared up to go about that. Okay, I want to answer a couple questions really quick. Um, we have the Ask Stacy at earthlink.net um, email address where you can ship me a question real quick and, and if, you, if I can answer it, I will. One of the questions w that was asked was, how come my, my wafer dye, my thin dye, isn't cutting my shimmer sheets? That's really easy to answer. You need a more solid wafer dye. Any wafer dye that is intricate, that, that has a lot of d detail to it, a lot of design to it, is not going to cut the shimmer sheets. So if you have the Elizabeth Crafts butterflies, the silhouette of the butterfly, the solid piece of the butterfly will cut your shimmer sheet, but that overlay that goes on top, it's too detailed. It will not cut your shimmer sheet. If you have um, the Elizabeth Craft kimono, the silhouette will cut the shimmer sheet but the over the top, the, the, the piece that uh, outlines the kimono, that gives you all the detail of the kimono, it's too detailed. It will not. So wafer dyes are very specific when you're using them with shimmer sheets. You have to have something that is a more solid piece with not a lot of intricacies to it. Now, of course, a steel rule dye, steel rule dye, thick is going to cut shimmer sheets all day long and it doesn't matter if it's in intricate or not it doesn't matter you're going to still get great cuts but when using your wafer cuts your wafer dies make sure that the the design you're trying to cut with the shimmer sheet is not too intricate it, what it will do is it will leave a line it will it will leave an impression where the um, die was, but then you'd take your fussy cut scissors and you'd have to cut it out. Now, if you have the patience for that, <laughs> good for you, not me. <laughs> I know, I know where I'm good at and what that doesn't work for me, and I would never have the patience to cut it out. So I want something that's gonna be consistent and work every time. When you use your wafer dies, use a more solid piece, okay? So I wanted to start answering questions um, about the the that, that are coming through the ask stacy at earthlink.net um, email address and there was one more question and the question was what's the difference between stays on and memento ink stays on is a permanent ink when you use stays on ink think sharpie pen think permanent um, stays on is meant for non-porous materials like metal and plastic and vellum and things of that nature whereas your memento ink is an all-over dye based ink now you can use stays on to stamp on paper absolutely but you can't use memento ink to stamp on um, your metal or your acetate it will just wipe off so when you see stays on think permanent Think Sharpie marker and know that it's really meant for a non-porous material. You absolutely can use it on paper, but you can't use your memento ink on vellum, on plastic, on acetate. It'll just wipe right off, okay? So that's the difference between memento and stays on. No, you can't use stays on with your Copic markers. Yes, you can use memento with your Copic markers. So I answered those two questions. Every week I'll go and take a look and see if there's a couple questions I can answer for you. And, um, and keep sending them to askstacy at earthlink.net and we'll get, to, we'll get to your question eventually, I hope. Okay, now we have winners. Oh, <laughs> I told you I had a lot to talk about. <laughs> we have winners from the last YouTube where we did the pan pastels and the pan pastels are all in and the girls are starting to fill the orders and ship them. Yay. So we have winners and these YouTube winners are going to get some additional pan pastels that were not in their kit. So congratulations to all the winners. We had over 600 comments. So we picked three winners. I'm doing it about every 200. So for every 200 comments, we pick a winner. So three winners this time and you all are going to win some new Pam Pastel colors that are not in the Susan's Garden kit. That way, just in case you ordered it, you don't get duplicates. <laughs> okay, so are we ready for winners? All right, first one is McKayton13. 
M-C-A-Y-T-O-N-13. You're a winner! Next we have Yvette Acosta. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Yvette, because it starts with an I, and my Yvette starts with a Y. The, my, my Yvette SMS girl starts with a Y, but Yvette Acosta, congratulations, my dear. You have won. I'm very excited for both of you, and last but not least, and I'm I'm excited for you too, uh, Mary Jane Erda. Yay, Mary Jane, you have won. So I've got Mary Jane. Woot, 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 woot. <laughs> I have got McKayton and... M-C-A-Y-T-O-N-13 and Yvette Acosta. What are you going to do? You're going to call us here at the store. You're going to call 661-298-1112. You're going to ask for Naomi, who does the most amazing job in getting everything out to you. And you're going to give her all your information. And you're going to say, I'm a YouTube winner. I'm a YouTube winner. <laughs> She'll get you packed and out the door. Um, got my blue slip, see? All right, so the three of you, congratulations, job well done. And if you want to be a YouTube winner, what do you have to do? You have to leave a comment right after you watch this YouTube. So don't go run and leave a comment now. Watch me, then go <laughs> leave a comment. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to get started for today. I think that's all I needed to tell you about, but I want to be really clear on that warehouse sale. We're going to have thousands of dies. So get your orders in and just know that we will not start shipping until the entire event is over and about a week later. So we have a week to print all the orders. Okay. <laughs> what have we got for you today? I have got alcohol inks and vellum by Ruby Rocket. I'm going to show you really quickly what alcohol inks were meant to do. Now alcohol inks is a Tim Holtz Ranger product and they're fabulous. And they came out with a very um, specific purpose. I mean, they, they, they do a beautiful job on what Tim shows. I want to show you a different way to use them because I know a lot of you have alcohol inks in your stash. You saw Tim demo them or you watched a YouTube and you ran right out and you got them. But then they sit there and they don't do much. So I want to show you what else you can do with them if you've already got them. And if you don't, I want to show you how useful they can be because alcohol ink is very much like a Copic marker in a way. It's there, there are two peas in the same pod. So I want to show you what we can do with them. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to tilt on down and we're going to get started for today. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Off we go. All right. How's that? That looks pretty good to me. Look pretty good to you. Let's just push some of this up a little ways. Okay. So alcohol inks. This is how it's sold. They come in these little bottles. And a little bottle goes a very long way. I want to say there's at least 36 colors, maybe even more than that. And they blend. They're meant to do, again, non-porous materials. So they do metal, they do acetate, they do vellum, they do high gloss paper that where the ink doesn't just seep right in. So when you think of alcohol ink, you think of not your typical paper, because if you were to put it on regular paper, it just soaks in and becomes a blob. In fact, I have a piece of regular paper right here. And let's just take one real quick. So I've got my alcohol ink here. This is stream. This is just regular cardstock. If I drop it on, it soaks in. Oh, I don't have a little foamy on here. It soaks in and pretty much becomes just a blob. You don't want to use your alcohol inks on regular paper. There's really not much you can do with them. I mean, it doesn't move. I don't, it, it just, the paper is too porous. Alcohol inks need to sit on something that is not. Um, not porous, so it kind of sits on top and gives you an opportunity to move it around. People will get alcohol inks and think that they can go in and color regular paper with it, and you just can't. You can see it just does nothing. Now, Tim Holtz came up with um, a beautiful background technique with alcohol inks, and I want to show you that really quickly because that's really what alcohol inks were intended for, and if you've never seen alcohol inks before, I want to give you both. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just going to do a really quick demonstration with it, and then we're going to move on to the Ruby Rocket Vellum because that is absolutely stunning, and I don't know that you've seen that before. So with Tim Holtz techniques, you need a piece of glossy cardstock. Now they sell Ranger Cells glossy cardstock and it's a creme coat paper. I have found that, and you can buy it, it's great. I have found for me, it's just as easy to go to the dollar store and buy 
They're high gloss photo paper. Literally, I bought these at the dollar store last night. Two sizes, eight and a half by 11 and the smaller size, the four by six, for a buck each. Now, the creme coat's probably a little bit easier to work with. Things move around a little bit easier on it, but for me, I'd rather save the money, get the cheap, inexpensive, glossy paper, and spend more money on the alcohol inks, get more colors, than maybe spend $10 on a pack of paper. For that, I could get three more colors. <laughs> so again, save where you can save, buy a pack for a dollar, see if it works for you. It's a buck, it's okay. If it doesn't, then go back and use the Ranger brand. But if it does, look at all the money you've saved yourself. Okay, so you need a blending tool, and that's what this is. Comes just like this. Blending tool with some felt pads, and yes, you can buy additional felt pads. Now, this is the same blending tool that you would use when you're using his Distress inks. The only difference is the pad. This is a foam pad. These are felt pads. You don't need different blending, a different blending tool. You just change the pad depending on if you're using a Distress ink or the alcohol ink. Okay? We're going to be using the alcohol ink, so we're going to be using the foam. Or, I'm sorry, the felt. I've got my felt pad. It's on by Velcro. You just push it down there and it's happy. Just stays on right by Velcro. And I have got my colors here. Now, there's a couple different quick techniques on how to do alcohol ink. You could take it and kind of drop it on your craft mat. Maybe a couple colors. Drop a couple colors. And take some of the blending solution. You're going to need blending solution. This is, I'm not exactly sure what's in it. Some sort of a alcohol-based almost like a, a, a nail polish remover or something along that lines, but you're just gonna drop it on there and then you're going to take your paper with the glossy side down and you're literally just gonna start swirling. And it starts to make a background for you. Okay, starts to make a background. Now that's one of the ways that Tim Holtz does it. Easy to do, then you could go back in, you could add more down and onto your mat and get a few more colors going on there, or you could take your blending tool and you could um, finish it. The other way that we use alcohol inks with paper is a straight application using the blending tool. So I've got my ink here, let's put a couple colors, and my blending solution. and I'm gonna go straight to my paper. Now some people dab, some people swirl. It's really whatever makes you happy. You can dab, you can swirl, but can you see it moving around? And it makes beautiful backgrounds. Not only that, but it makes beautiful handmade paper that you can then die cut with. It's just lovely, and with so many colors and the blending um, capabilities, you can make just about anything. I'm just gonna go in there and swirl. Again, some people like to dab. It's, there's really no right or wrong. It's really what works best for you. And I've got my paper covered. And it makes beautiful, beautiful backgrounds. Beautiful backgrounds. That you could die cut flowers and butterflies and all sorts of things. And then if you really wanted to, you could go black, back with your blending solution and you could just drop it every here and there. And what that's going to do is it's going to move that alcohol ink and make little droplets. Can you see my little droplets coming up? Very cool. You can move it around again. It's really up to you. They're very user friendly. They do get a little inky, hence the reason no manicure this week. <laughs> I knew I was gonna be doing this. I was like, I'll go for a manicure after this YouTube. <laughs> but very pretty. Now, to stamp on top of this, this is a non-porous material. It's a glossy paper. Can you see that gloss? Memento ink is not going to do such a good job. You're going to want to use a stays-on ink. So the nice person who asked about stays-on and memento, this is one of those times where you're going to choose a stays-on ink because you've got that glossy paper, that non-porous paper, so it will have a hard time for that memento dye based ink to sink into the paper, but the stays-on will stamp right on top of that and be just fine. 
Now you can stamp on top of this, you can die cut this, there's a million things you can do with this. And I've got a few other samples that I did, just as backgrounds. I mean, isn't that beautiful? Just think of all the things you could do with this. You could just stamp the most beautiful stamp on it, a butterfly stamp and a sentiment, and there is your card. Easy to do. Look at the colors. They're just yummy. And that's what alcohol inks are known for. Again, you could do it if you had a tin. They will adhere to your tin. If you had acetate, you could do it on acetate. Any kind of plastic. But they're a lot of fun, and they really give you the most beautiful, vibrant colors. And that is what alcohol inks were made to do. Now, we're going to do a little bit different technique. I have vellum here. I have the most beautiful vellum by Ruby Rocket. It's part of their Fundamentals collection. It has got a silver printed on the top of it. Heat set onto the top. So the they're just they're just gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful. And people always want to know, well, what can I do with vellum? Well, you can do a lot with vellum. I'm looking for a couple other styles. See if what other styles I've got in here. Oh, here's the damask. Can you see that? Is that just gorgeous? This vellum is absolutely stunning. It's heavyweight. It's thick. It doesn't curl. Um, Ruby Rocket did a beautiful job, and it's sold in packs. And I want to say there's eight or nine different packs. Okay? So we cut this vellum down to size for a card, and I want to show you another way of using your alcohol inks. I'm going to take my alcohol ink. Now, for this technique, you do not want to use the blending solution. It just moves the alcohol ink around and makes a mess. For this technique, you're going to take that blending solution and you're going to put the cap on and you're going to put it away. <laughs> this time, we just want to use straight uh, alcohol ink. I'm going to take my alcohol ink and I'm going to run it down the side. Do, do, do. Put a couple drops down the side. I'm going to take my blending tool and I'm going to move that alcohol ink out. Can you see how I'm just covering the whole back of this page? I used a little too much. Didn't need to use as much as I did, but that's okay. So I've got the whole back of my vellum page covered in alcohol ink. Now that means that I used the side that doesn't have the silver. Can you see that silver sheen? I use the back side that's plain. That's what I have put down right here. Now alcohol ink is like Copic. It dries very fast. It's dry. It dries almost in instantaneously, which is really nice because then you're not waiting to do something next with it. You get to move on right away. But you want to do it on the back of your vellum, not on the front. Okay? Now when I turn it over, I've made the most beautiful background. Do you see the color coming through? Is that not just gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. So you've taken a plain piece of vellum, just a plain piece of vellum, and you've colored it. And because the silver print is heat set on it, the alcohol ink doesn't come through. It only You only see it where it had a plain clear vellum. So wherever that silver printing is, that alcohol ink does not absorb through. It just shows exactly where that clear print or the clear vellum was. It's so easy to do. And yes, you can do it on plain vellum. I'm going to show you in just a minute plain vellum. But let me grab a card real quick. Look at that card. That was done with the damask vellum. And we took an alcohol ink and colored the back and made it beautiful. So simple. We just put a little dye, put a little Elizabeth Craft sentiment, some ribbon, and it was done. I mean, this was for a make and take, and usually our make and takes are like a half an hour to 45 minutes long. The girls were done with this in like 10 minutes. They're like looking at me going, okay, what's next? It's like, no, that's it, surprise. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> 
But then they thought, my gosh, I could get cards done in a heartbeat. And because there's so many different patterns of the vellum, you can make a masculine card, you can make a feminine card, you can make a kid card, and it's just super fast and easy. So let me grab another, here's the damask. Is that dry? Let me grab another one. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna take my felt off. I'm not gonna throw this away. Not yet, because I'm not done for the day. I'm just gonna put that aside. That way if I use that color again, I just put it right back on. Now when I'm all done for today, or when you're all done crafting for that day, then I would go ahead and throw them away. But for now, I'm just gonna put it over there and we're gonna do a different color. How about we use the really bright, well, let's use the purple. So what did I do? I took it and I put some drops down the side. And I'm starting on this side so I can push it out. So I can pull it out. Fill in all the little holes. If you see any little white spaces, you're just gonna drop a little bit more and fill in wherever there's a little white space because you want it to be completely covered. And again, I'm on the back side of the vellum. Now, you can see that in some places it's kind of mushy and it's not really uniform and you know some places it's dried a little different. That's okay. When you turn it over, doesn't matter. When you turn it over, it becomes just yumminess. <laughs> It doesn't have to be perfect on the back side. The idea is just to get the whole thing covered so that when you turn it over, it's just sheer yumminess. Absolutely beautiful. This was so fun and so easy and really makes a high impact for very little, for very little work. <laughs> so we had this one and we had the purple. So that's one way of using your alcohol inks. Now I want to show you that you can die cut with them as well. Well actually I think we're going to paint with it first. So here I've got another piece of vellum and you can see how it has almost all silver and very few just where the flowers are is where there's clear vellum, the flowers and the leaves. So for this I'm going to go in I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol ink, put it right onto my pad because I want to have a little bit more control. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to put the ink right where I want it on my flowers. Now mind you, I'm on the back side. Here's the shiny silver side. I'm working on the back side. And let's do another purple one down here. And I'm literally just painting my flowers. I'm going to add a little bit of pink. and get some pink on some of my flowers. And you can see I'm not being pretty, I'm not being pristine, I'm just really just trying to get it on there. And then if I wanted to, I could take a little bit of green, put a little bit of the green, and here I've got uh, lettuce. Put a little bit of the green. Now you could do this with a Q-tip, you could do this with just about anything because you're going in there and you're coloring. And I'm just going to color some of these leaves. Can you see that I'm not being very precise? I'm not like trying to color in a specific leaf. I'm just trying to get the color over the leaves. And then when we're done, let's grab a, oh, let's grab a card. Let's see. When you're done, Look at that. It's an aha moment. It was an aha moment for me, I have to tell you. From plain, same paper, plain, to colored. And what I want you to see is that it is by no means pretty on the back. This is not, um, this is not go in there and detail and paint every little flower. This is just get the color where you want it to be behind each item behind each flower, behind the leaves, because it's not going to come through that silver. But oh my gosh, is that gorgeous? I hope that this is coming through on the camera. Is that not just beautiful? And again, a Q-tip. Anything that you can get that alcohol ink onto, 
I don't want to use this because this is too big. I need, I have small flowers here. I want to be more precise with where I'm coloring. But I'm just going in there and getting this green down. I just went in there and got that pink and that purple right on top of the flowers. And it will just color it all in. Again, just not very pretty. They don't need to see that side. <laughs> <laughs> That's the side you're going to put the Sukwang tape down and they're never going to see it. You're going to take it right to your card and that's what they're going to see and they're going to go, oh my gosh, how did you do that? And uh, you'll send them to my YouTube. <laughs> I have one of these completely done. Let me find it real quick because it was, oh, here it is. I mean, how quick and how easy is that card? Color the back of the vellum, throw a bow down, put a sentiment, happy birthday, get well, with sympathy, whatever, and it is done. You would never know on the back of this, it looks like that. <laughs> super fun, super easy. Okay, I want to show you another thing. Moving on. Can you die cut with vellum? Yes, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color this one real quick. And then I'm gonna pull up my die cutting machine. So I'm gonna run it down the side. For me, that's just easier because then I can move it out. See how I pull it out and get good coverage? Pull it right out and get it all covered. And again, doesn't matter if it's beautiful on the back, that's not the point. Because when you turn it over, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love crafting where you can't make a mistake. <laughs> this is so right up my alley. Look at that, is that beautiful? But I'm not going to attach this to the card. No, I'm going to die cut it. Now, I would recommend having one of these craft mats when you're doing this because when I'm all done, I'm going to take a wipe and literally this stuff is going to wipe right up and right off. So I would highly recommend a craft mat when you are doing this because that's just going to come right off. Okay, now let's grab my Sizzix machine. And of course, I've got the Big Shot machine. I've got the new Big Shot machine. <laughs> oh, I need to turn it this way. You can see I've got my Do Not Cut plate. I've decided that I need to write it even bigger than I was writing it because can you see in my Do Not Cut plate my cuts? <laughs> now, I didn't do those and I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. I even wrote oops. But I've decided that my Do Not Cut plate now needs to be written in very large letters. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, who did that? Who cut in my do not cut plate? But it happens and thankfully they still work just fine if you've got a couple cuts in them, no worries. I'm gonna put my do not cut plate down. I have got the new die by Sizzix and this is a new collection that was designed by Prima. Yes, Prima, the flower people. So I've got their new butterfly here. Actually, I've got the entire collection. And these are also going to be a part of the YouTube Yummy. But I've got my dye right here. I've got my vellum. Now you can color the vellum afterwards if you wanted to. I'm just choosing to do it ahead of time. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put my cut plate. So here's my sandwich. Clear plate. Do not cut plate. Dye paper, second clear plate, and I'm going to send it on through. Little creaks and cracks are okay. They're just fine. And then I'm going to pull it out. Move this off to the side. I have really loved my blue machine. I absolutely have. It's, it, I, I, I've gotten used to it. I, I'm a creature of habit, and so change for me can be a little difficult, but I put the pink and black one away and I have embraced my blue. Look at that. Give it a fold, 
where the body is, and look at your butterfly, all out of vellum, all colored. Is that not gorgeous? It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. We love it. We absolutely love it. Vellum cuts just fine. And yes, you can cut it with your um, wafer dies. Absolutely, you can cut vellum with your wafer dies. It's just beautiful. Right out of a sheet. Now, this die gives you a small and a big. Here's your small butterfly. So you can have your two butterflies all out of your vellum. And the easiest way to color the vellum is with the alcohol inks. And it changes the vellum. It takes it from looking just kind of blah and boring into stunning and amazing. And because you have so many colors of the alcohol inks, you can change it to whatever color you're looking for. You don't have to do it one color. If you want to go in and do multiple colors, you can. You don't have to keep it just one color. You could go in there and you could add a little bit of purple and a little bit of the blue. And I'm going to keep with my pink even though and just blend them around. Nobody says you got to keep it one. You can get multiple colors in there to give you amazing different looks. Want a little bit more purple, throw a little bit more purple in there. And just blend it around. Keep in mind, you're not going to use your blending solution for this. All it does is make a mess. Just makes a mess. And then you've got something that has multiple colors running through it, as opposed to just the one. So if you die cut this with a butterfly, you're going to have the blues and the purples coming through it. Oh, it's yummy. It is just yummy. <laughs> Holy smokes, artichokes. There's just so much you can do with these. And a lot of people already own them and they kind of sit in their cupboard and they look at them and they go, well, what do I do with them now? I've done the, I've done the fun Tim Holtz thing. You know, I've, I've done that. And yes, this has a purpose and it has a great look. Absolutely. But not for everything. Here is another use. Pull your vellum, get some vellum, and you can make the most beautiful cards. I want to show you. I had a hard time holding on to this card that I'm going to show you at the Make and Take. So many people wanted this card. Yvette made this. Yvette with a Y. <laughs> and we die cut the butterfly. We actually die cut it twice. We did it out of plain vellum on the bottom, so it would be just the silhouette. And then we did it out of the pattern vellum on the top. Is that not the most beautiful card? Yeah, everybody wanted this card. And you saw how easy it was. She cut a piece of mat. She cut her top, um, her face for her card. Die cut this out, put a little pearl, and poof, done. Yummy, isn't it? Okay, so what have we learned today? We have learned that alcohol inks are a Ranger product by Tim Holtz. They are similar to a Copic marker. And I do want to say, can you do this with your Copic markers? Yes, you absolutely can. Is it going to take up a lot of your ink? Yes, it absolutely will. The cost on these is far less than a Copic marker. So use the alcohol inks to color the vellum, unless you wanted to do something like this, where you wanted to go in and color very specific colors. Then you could go in and do it with your Copics if you really couldn't find an alcohol ink the colors that you wanted. But stay away from coloring the backgrounds with your, with your Copic markers because it does take um, a lot of the Copic marker ink and I think you'll be upset that you're going through your colors so fast and having to refill. But alcohol inks are made for your non-porous um, materials, so glossy paper, acetate, plastic, uh, tins, any kind of metal, any little keys that you want to distress, any little uh, tchotchkes or charms. That's what this is for. And yes, you can do it the Tim Holtz way by either dropping it onto your craft mat and swirling or by using the Tim Holtz, the, the uh, applicator tool. And really one tool is all you need, even if you're using distress inks, because you just change the pads. You can either go from felt to foam, just depending on what, um, what ink you're using. So you can do it that way, but you also have the option of playing with other things that are non-porous, and vellum is non-porous. So to color these are absolutely just beautiful. 
beautiful. And everybody has maybe a couple sheets of vellum, but this vellum's special because it's got the silver beautiful on top of it that lets you just have this yumminess that comes through once you've colored behind it. And this is from Ruby Rocket, the vellum. It's part of their Fundamentals collection, and they are sold in packs. Um, I've got some packs somewhere up here. They're sold in smaller sizes and then larger that you can cut down. Okay. Now what else? We talked about going ahead and die cutting your vellum. Easy to do with the alcohol inks. And again, if you want to do more than one color, that's fine. Just put more than one color on the back. But when you're using the vellum, stay away from your blending solution. And alcohol inks are meant to blend, so it's okay. It's really kind of hard to make mud with them. <laughs> That's what I call it, making mud. Um, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. It's a learning curve, so give yourself a couple tries to get it right, and then you should be good. And play with the different colors and see which ones blend better. I will tell you, for this technique, you really want the brights more vibrant alcohol inks. There are some alcohol inks that say lights on them. Let's see if I have one in here. See how, I don't know if you can see this, this says Adirondack Bright. You're looking for something that has more brightness to it, or the original alcohol inks. Um, you want to stay away, there are some that say lights on it, and you want to stay away from those because the color is so muted that you're not going to see it through the vellum. It's fine when you're using it straight on paper, on the glossy paper, but on vellum you don't see it if it has alcohol ink lights on it. So you want to kind of stay away from those, but the brights are stunning. And what did I use to do this? Yes, you can buy the expensive paper. I went to the dollar store. Try the dollar store paper if you've got a local dollar store, um, or Walmart, or someplace where you can get inexpensive glossy photo paper. It's different than the creme coat that Ranger sells, but for me, it works just as good. I'm able to manipulate it just the way I want, and I'd rather save the money. I'd rather spend a dollar here and get a couple extra inks, okay? Save where you can save and buy where you, you need to buy. All right, let me show you some samples. Um, well, no, let me show you first off the, the dyes that are gonna be on sale. So these are the Prima collection. This is some of them. Here's the butterfly that we used. And here is a Prima Rose, and this has an outline and a back piece. So you do the outline on the top and the back piece, and you can just do beautiful things with it. The Prima Leaves, I've got samples with this one. Another Prima Rose, and I've got a sample with this one to show you. Didn't Prima do a lovely job designing? And these are all going to be on a YouTube Yummy. Another Rose. This isn't all of them, I just pulled some to show you. The Prima tags, another set of tags, and a floor. I want to say there's about 12 Prima dies, and they will all be on sale. Then we have the vellum from Ruby Rocket, and again, this is the flower. It comes in packs. There's the smaller size, and then this is the larger size that you can cut down. They've got a million different patterns. So they've got everything from a Swiss dot to the damask to cute hearts. I mean, just about everything you can imagine. And they're really affordable, and they will all be on a YouTube Yummy. Here's the damask. I don't know if you can see it, but really pretty. So we've got the packs from Ruby Rocket on the vellum. The alcohol inks will be on a YouTube Yummy. The Sizzix dyes by Prima will be on a YouTube Yummy. And I think that's it. But let me show you the samples that we've got. So I already showed you that one, which is just stunning. And I showed you the one where we've colored the back, which is also just stunning. <laughs> If I say so myself, I think the SMS girls are so talented. Here we've got with the leaves. How pretty is that? And yes, you can take your alcohol ink, because it's like a Copic, you can take it and you can color your Elizabeth Craft peel-offs or your dazzles. Just run it right over the top and you've colored your your sentiment to match exactly the color you've used in your 
um, alcohol inking on the back of your vellum. Yep, it's, it's permanent. So, and this is non-porous. The stickers are non-porous, so they work hand in hand perfectly together. Love that card. Here we took, and we actually just took straight strips of vellum, and we colored them black because we didn't have any black um, ribbon that size. Looks just like ribbon. Took plain vellum, just basic plain vellum, cut it into strips, colored them with the black um, alcohol inks, and made something that looks just like ribbon. Let's see, I have got the other sample using the Prima Flower. Remember I showed you that Prima Flower. Where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Here we go. Prima Flower. That's what it looks like on the package. That's what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> and again, we colored the back of the vellum. Beautiful, isn't it? Actually, she colored the top of the vellum too, but beautiful. Yum. Okay, so we have that one. We have another flower that we did where we've curled it. And that's another Prima flower. Look at how easy is this. Again, we've colored the vellum right on the back. Look at how beautiful is that. That's the one we did for the make and take. Everybody got to pick their vellum and they got to pick their color and they got to have a really great time. Look at all these. They got to do, they got to pick whatever one they wanted to do. Here we did the flowers all one color. And this is what they got to do for the make and take. But how fun and how easy. Oh, that one's upside down. Okay, so we've played with alcohol inks, we've played with vellum, we've played with a couple dyes. You've learned hopefully some new techniques on what you can do with alcohol inks, especially if you already have them. And if you don't, I think you want to try a few. I do, they're really fun. They make the most beautiful, beautiful backgrounds. And then if you use them with the vellum, you're limitless what you can do. Oh my gosh, can you just see this die cutting this out with the butterfly or the flower? Just beautiful. So I am going to tilt on up. And I'm gonna say, hey everybody, it's me, Stacy. And where are you going to get all of these wonderful products? Well, of course you're going to get them at Scrapbooking Made Simple. And you can find us either online or in our retail store. Our online address is www.scrapbooking-made-simple.com or shop at the word ATSMS.com. Either one of those addresses will get you exactly where you need to go. And I want to throw a congratulations out again to the YouTube winners, uh, McCayton13, Yvette Acosta, and Mary Jane Erda. You all, congratulations, call Naomi. We will have the alcohol inks on a YouTube yummy. We will have the Sizzix dyes on a YouTube yummy. We will have the vellum on a YouTube yummy. So congratulations to all of you. We hope you enjoy it and uh, shop at sms.com. Okay, it's me, Stacy, saying goodbye. See you next week. Don't forget to post a comment. Bye.